Good morning, it's Lisa with Lisa Heal Yourself. And today we are going to discuss the differences between yogurt and kefir, and we're going to make recipes with whole milk, goat's milk, and also coconut milk. And we're also going to learn about cultured vegetables and making sauerkraut. Okay, so first let's discuss yogurt and kefir. What are they and how are they different? What are they good for? So yogurt keeps the colon clean. It produces bacteria, it helps you to go to the washroom, it helps to keep that colon clean. It also provides food for your existing gut bacteria. So for all that good bacteria that you have in there, it's providing food for it. So it's a really good food, it's great to give your kids, some of it has extra added probiotics, but mostly it's there to keep your gut clean and providing food for that amazing gut bacteria that you have. Now, kefir, on the other hand, it helps grow new bacteria. So there's gonna be many new strains when you introduce something like kefir. It's going to get rid of the unfriendly yeast. It crowds it out, so therefore it gets rid of the bad yeast that you have in your stomach. It is slightly easier to digest than yogurt. It's one of the best remedies for things like candida or getting rid of bad bacteria and inoculating with good bacteria and it actually adds more nutrients to your gut and to your diet as well. So kefir is clearly the winner for healing when we're, when we're talking about healing. Now it is stronger, and so if you're starting out with a yogurt versus a kefir, you're not gonna be introducing too many new bacteria. So it depends how many good bacteria you want to introduce to your gut. It also depends on how long they're cultured for. So when you culture your yogurt, meaning you let it sit and you let it ferment, same as your kefir, you let it sit and you let it ferment. If you do it on the lower side, the lower time side, it's a little bit um, sweeter and it doesn't have as much bacteria. So you can also under culture your kefir to make it not quite as strong if you're just beginning out, or you can over culture your kefir, have it on the heavier side, it's a sour taste, same with yogurt, it's a much sour taste. If it's under, it's a, it's a much sweeter taste. But right in the middle is that sweet spot that everybody likes. But for healing purposes, you can play around with that. Do you want to start out with a little bit weaker amount of bacteria and then graduate to more and more bacteria? So you can play around with it that way. Okay, so there's three ways to make kefir or yogurt. Let's, let's start with kefir. So you use grains, kefir grains. You use kefir starter culture or you take kefir from an existing store-bought and you culture it from that. Okay, so let's talk about making yogurt and kefir next from starter kits. So you can go ahead and buy a starter kit. I picked up some starter kits just at my local health food store. So this is a vegan yogurt starter kit, which we'll use for our coconut milk. This, these two, one is a yogurt probiotic starter kit and one is a kefir uh, starter kit. So again, you can pick them up anywhere. You can usually pick them up at your health food store. If you're buying online, I like to buy from bodyecology.com. So if you go to Body Ecology, they have all kinds of starter kits. They have yogurt cultures, they have kefir cultures, they have all the different cultures. I also like to go to a website called culturedfoodlife.com and Donna has a bunch of starter cultures on there for sale. So again, culturedfoodlife.com and recipes, starter cultures, everything on there. So you can buy those online. They're really, really great and healthy starter kits that you can get sent to you. I also like one called Cultures for Health. So if you go on culturesforhealth.com, you can buy all kinds of starter kits. Uh, there and you can also buy grains when you go there. So let's let's talk a little bit about the difference Between these culture kits, which is what we're going to use for our recipe today and what are grains now? They're not actually grains. So if you're grain free, don't worry It's just that they look like grains, but they're just like little bacteria. So this is what they look like here so this would be a kefir grain uh, and again, it's not really a grain or Again, you can use a starter kit, which is a cultured kit. So what's the difference and why do you use them? Well, if you use the grains, you can use these grains for life. You can just continue to make kefir when it runs out. You continue to pour your milk on, you continue to keep it going. The thing is you have to be consistent and you have to continue to use it, okay? 
you can store them. There's a way that you can store them, but for this video purposes, you have to, you can't get lazy. You have to continue to make it. So if you're just in your beginning of your journey and you're adding probiotics into your body, you're not sure um, how often you're gonna be using it. You're not sure how much you're gonna go through. It's always best to start with the cultured kit so you can get used to fermenting, you can get used to how your body's reacting to it, you can change to different various types of milks and different types of products. Um, and then once you're comfortable with it, once you know you want to have this in your diet every day, you can buy the grains. You're gonna activate the grains one time and then you just continue to make it with those same grains over and over and they grow. So. Again, you can't be lazy with it. You have to know that you're going to be doing it, but then it's the cheapest way because once you get them, even though they're a little bit more expensive, you have them for life. So with kefir culture packs, for example, you're gonna get a bunch of packs in your, in your package here. So it's really good because each pack you can reuse to make uh, another batch of kefir. You save, you know, a little bit, a quarter of a cup at the end and you use it to make your next one, you pour your you pour your next milk into it. So it's again, really easy and you can use do that up to eight times. So each pack can be used up to eight times and you get a bunch of packs in here. So again, just buying this for the beginning is all you need. So again, if you're planning to use a buffalo milk, a, a goat's milk, a cow's milk, any kind of an animal milk, you're gonna be using a milk, kefir or yogurt. If, and you can use plant milks with those too, you can, but then of course it's not completely vegan. If you're completely vegan, um, you're gonna want to get a vegan culture starter. You can use coconut milk, you can use your almond milk, you can use whatever kind of milk, vegan milk that you want or plant milk that you want. Now again, we've already been uh, through what the difference between kefir is and yogurt is. Also the culture time is different. So with yogurt, it's so eight to 10 hours. So you wanna check on your yogurt at about eight hours when you make it from a starter culture. For your kefir, you're going to leave this for 24 hours, maybe even a little more. So it's a 24 hour culture time. This is an eight hour culture time. What happens if you leave it past your culture time? It starts to get stronger, more probiotics in there, but sour to taste. And eventually it can separate and look um, clumpy, which you don't want. Okay, so let's make the recipes, let's begin. So get your ingredients together. I get my containers ready first. So here's four mason jars. I label first. I put a piece of scotch tape and with a Sharpie, I write what we're gonna make. So we have one for goat's kefir, coconut kefir, coconut yogurt, goat's yogurt, and I'm gonna do a cow's yogurt in a nice big container because this is the one that my kids eat and they go through a lot of it. Down here, you get your starter cultures ready. I have a yogurt culture, a kefir culture, a vegan yogurt culture, and I also have my thermometer ready to go. You don't need a thermometer, but it's helpful. You also wanna have your milks ready. So I take my yogurt that I'm gonna be making the cow's yogurt from out of the uh, fridge as I'm making everything, just to warm it up from the fridge temperature. We want it to be um, not super, super cold. We want it to be sitting more at room temperature. I'm taking the goat's milk out of the fridge as well as the cow's milk. These are all organic milks. Uh, the goat's milk is 3%. This is a 2% and this is a 4%. You also want to be sure that you take out enough spoons. I'm going to be working with uh, milk, goat's milk, and cow's milk. So I want to be able to, and coconut milk, so I want to be able to have enough spoons that I don't mix them. The next thing I do is come over to my heat and I make sure that my air conditioning, anything, if it's summer, you do not want your air conditioning on when you're doing this. And you want to make sure that you have a temperature that's nice and balmy, nice and moist. If it's in the winter, have your heat on. If it's too cool in your house and you have air conditioning, I'm just gonna open this to get some nice summer breeze in. It won't ferment properly. Now, there's a lot of different ways that you can make yogurt and kefir, but I'm going to suggest this method. You want to bring your milks to a boil, and then you're going to let them cool down until they're not quite room temperature. They're still warm, because if it's too cool, 
your cultural will just be runny, it won't set. And if it's too hot, um, your cultures will die. The problem is a lot of people think, well, I'll just warm the milk then. I won't bring it to a boil and cool it down. If you don't bring it to a boil, you're not activating everything in the proteins in the milk. And if you only bring it to the temperature, the, the ending temperature that you want, um, your yogurt won't set. So you have to bring it to a temperature. It's an extra step. It takes a little longer. You have to raise it to the temperature and then you have to cool it down. Okay, so don't forget that step. Also, you can, if you're using starter packs, you can use metal spoons, but when you're using grains, you absolutely cannot. So I prefer never to actually, it just activates the cultures better. You don't wanna take a chance on anything wrecking um, them. Since we're gonna be using three different types of milk, we have coconut, goat, and cows. I've got three different pots out here ready to bring the milks up to the temperature. You can do these separate or you can just do it all at once. We're gonna do it all at once today. So we're gonna open the cans of coconut milk. You wanna use two coconut cans of milk for one mason jar uh, worth of yogurt, the large size. Since we're gonna be doing a coconut yogurt and a coconut kefir, I'm gonna be using four cans. Now, here's another tip. When you get the cans, make sure you get one with guar gum in it. Um, I don't generally use those ones if I'm making smoothies and other things. I use chaws and it basically doesn't have anything. But they don't heat well, they don't make whipping cream well, they don't make yogurt well. So just go ahead and get a um, organic coconut milk, but make sure it has something that's um, blended it together so it's going to be good for yogurt. You don't want a chunky yogurt or kefir. in my organic cow's milk into the big one. And the organic goat's milk. This is a very uh, full pot, so we're gonna be having to be careful as we stir this. Once we have them all ready to go, we are going to turn on the burners. So the goal here is that we want to not burn these milks. We wanna heat them to boiling without burning them. And then we're gonna turn them down and let them cool. So if you have a kitchen thermometer, you're gonna measure the heat. If you don't, you just want to bring it just to a boil and turn it down. But if you do, you can choose whether you do it in Fahrenheit or Celsius. But your goal is to heat it to about 82 degrees Celsius or 180 degrees Fahrenheit. You're going to bring it to a boil and then you're going to let it cool down to about 23 to 25 degrees Celsius or 73 to 77 degrees Fahrenheit. So again, it's just above room temperature when you bring it down. You just want to be careful to keep stirring the milk so that the bottoms don't burn. This one is going to probably be ready first because more surface is getting heated. There's less of the milk in the container and I can already see little bubbles starting to form. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and check the, the thermometer. And remember, I'm looking for 82 degrees Celsius or 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so this one's already getting up to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna turn off the burner. And you can see what it looks like, just for your reference. It's just starting to get the bubbles. It's steaming. So if you don't have a thermometer, you wanna heat it to about that. I'm just gonna take it off and set it on the counter. Being sure to keep each spoon with the proper milk. The coconut milk has um, Heat it up nicely now. All the clumps are out of it. The goat's milk is heating up. So I am just going to check the temperature of this. This one is going up. It went up a lot slower, but it is now about to reach 72. So we're going to take this one off. Make sure you keep the proper spoons with the proper milks. Now we're just waiting on the coconut milk which my middle burner always heats up a little bit slower. So we're looking to let it cool down to 23 to 25 degrees Celsius. Or if you cook with Fahrenheit, you're looking to let it cool down to 73 to 77 degrees Fahrenheit. It's nice and warm, and that's when the cultures are already activated and they're gonna make a really nice kefir and yogurt. While your yogurt's cooling down, I want you to get out a few towels. So I've gotten my um, five tea towels, five dish towels. You could alternately get one large towel. The next thing you wanna get ready as your milk's cooling down is inside your stove, you're gonna take out your top baking rack. So I have a nice large space in there. That's where I'm going to keep the yogurt. You can choose to put it in a warm, dark cupboard but I like to use my oven, just make sure that you don't use it throughout the day. It's gotta sit somewhere where you are not gonna touch it, you're not gonna disturb it, you're not gonna wiggle it or jiggle it because once you put your kefir and your yogurt and once it's being activated, you definitely don't wanna stir it, shake it, mix it, or it will have to start over, it will reset, it will ruin what it's doing. So I won't be able to cook with my oven tonight, which is fine with me. We, I'm, not, I'm not actually planning to cook with it. If you were, you would have to put it in a warm cupboard, a warm, dark spot in your house. This is going to be warm and dark. It's nice and insulated with a lid and it's nice and dark inside. It seems like a lot of prep. It seems like a lot of work. I'm only doing a small batch here, but if you wanted to do a few yogurts, like three, four, I'm only doing one of each kind to show you. But generally you can do a few at once as well. Don't forget your starter packs are a good up to eight times. So it's gonna be easy to add and reculture your current yogurt. And I'll show you that with the first one that we're gonna make. So I like to move it to the containers because of course the hot hold a lot of heat. When you move them to con the containers that you're using, they will cool down a lot slower. Before you do that, you'll notice that there's a scum on the top of each of the milks from starting to cool. You're gonna wanna skim that off. Okay, so as for the coconut milk, you can see just... I'm gonna take it off and collect it onto a paper towel here. Go, we'll keep this spoon with this. Same thing with the cow's milk. We're going to collect that film. And again with the goat's milk, we're going to collect that film and just take it off the top. So we know that we're going to be making a goat's kefir as well as a goat's yogurt. So I am going to be filling. One and two. I'm going to be setting the goat's milk on its own paper towel so I don't confuse it. I'm going to be transferring the coconut milk. It's always helpful when you pour.
to use one of these things. Inevitably, if you don't, you'll make a mess. You'll spill half of it. whole milk yogurt and kefir starters for the cows and the goat milk. What I like to do now is scoop out a little bit of goat's milk. I'm going to pour a little bit in to our mixing dish here. You don't want anything to cross over or using completely separate utensils. So in the end, we want to have a little starter dish with our goat's kefir, a little starter dish for our goat's yogurt, a starter dish for our coconut yogurt, a starter dish for our coconut kefir, and a starter dish for our cow's yogurt. The reason we use those starter dishes is that we're gonna start the cultures in the starter dish. We're gonna stir them thoroughly. We're gonna make sure they're mixed completely before we add them into the bigger yogurt or kefir containers and then just do a small stir and then we're done. Then you don't touch it again, you wrap it up, you're gonna store it and you're not gonna to touch it again until it's ready. So my temperature is currently set at room temperature here to 24 degrees. So that was the temperature that we were looking for, but because my room temperature is already like this, I'm looking for it more closer to 27 or 30. We want it to be up high enough. It can be all the way up to 40, but I wouldn't do it higher than 40 when you're culturing a yogurt. All right, so when the yogurt has cooled down to the temperature that you would give a baby, it's lukewarm to the touch, you can go ahead and start your yogurt. So this is what you do if you want to make um, your yogurt from a store-bought yogurt. Now you could, if this could be goat's yogurt. It's, this happens to be cow's yogurt, so we're using cow's milk. Um, this could be done with kefir. This could be done with anything. So if you're t using the easy method of taking something you already had and making more, this is how you do it. You're gonna take about a quarter of a cup so it's usually about um, two to four tablespoons. So I'm just gonna put two of these in. I like to use the back end in these little mixing dishes because they're so much easier. So you just wanna mix it up so it's perfectly mixed in there. Just put another half in there. So you just want to stir this up until it's nice and blended and then we're going to pour it back into our milk. Once we pour it into our container, we're going to give it a little stir, just like that. Not very much, that's what the other bowl is for. We're going to secure it with our lid. You're going to cover it. If you're not going to be putting it in your oven, which is kind of like a box, it's tight, it's gonna keep all the heat in. If you're not gonna be doing that, you may want to use a tote bin, something with a lid. It almost creates kind of like a Dutch oven situation where the heat, the warmth just stays in, which is what we're looking for. So it's above, just a little above room temperature. Next, we're gonna be working with the goat's kefir and the goat's yogurt. So this one's gonna be our goat's kefir. This one's gonna be our goat's yogurt. I have it labeled here so it's easy for me to see. Okay, so the kefir and the yogurt. Now, again, you could take this if you had 
an actual bottle of goat's kefir or an actual bottle of goat's yogurt. And you could do the same process. You could add the yogurt to the starter, put it in here, put it to ferment. But since we're not gonna be doing that, we're gonna be using a starter. Gonna get a second spoon out. We're gonna empty the goat's kefir packet. We're also going to enter the yogurt starter. Once both starters are in, you can stir. What you wanna do is you really want to work the clumps out while it's in your little cup. So you're gonna be stirring slowly. We can start this one as well. We're gonna be stirring slowly. I like to use the ends. You can see how all the little uh, grains of the kefir are there. And we are going to just work those in until they're done. This process can take a while. You could be working it for a few minutes. So we don't want to ever blend it. We never want to put it in a blender. We never want to use um, a whisk. We just want to be patient and stir until everything is dissolved. The yogurt one has dissolved much, much faster. Focus on this one for a minute. So again, we're gonna go nice and easy. You really don't want any of those clumps. Again, a nice gentle stir. We don't wanna over whisk it, beat it, use a Vitamix or a blender. It has to be hand done, nice and easy. Patience is the key. The goat's yogurt looks perfect, so we're gonna transfer it to the container. Once we've transferred it, you're gonna give it a small stir. Very slowly. Once you've done that, you're going to secure it with a lid. And we're going to cover this with a cloth and we're going to transfer it to our baking sheet. We're going to continue to stir our kefir culture. It's looking nice. our big one. Give it a small stir. Secure it with a lid and set a cloth over it on the tray. Okay. Next we're going to move on to the coconut yogurt. Coconut yogurt will not thicken or any plant yogurt except aside from soy will not thicken on its own. So you're going to need to use a thickener. Now, a lot of people will use um, a pectin, and you can add your pectin here. You can also add gelatin. So we're gonna add a teaspoon. And again, it's gotta be dissolved thoroughly. I just wanna be sure that there's not a lot of clumps. You can whisk or blend the pectin before you add the yogurt culture, not after. So if the clumps aren't coming out, So you can give it a two minute blend if uh, 
you messed up like I did and forgot to bloom your gelatin. But again, if you want it to be truly vegan, you're using pectin, you just want to stir it in and you want to make sure it's dissolved early. I'm going to be using a vegan starter culture for the yogurt. And I'm actually going to be using my regular uh, kefir starter for the kefir. So that's how we're gonna do it. If I was truly vegan, then I would make sure that I also had a vegan kefir starter. So this is the kefir, we're going to pour it in there. I'm gonna use the vegan starter in there. Okay, so we want to again, make sure that we're stirring them well. Let that sit for a second. The fear starter takes a little longer to mix in. Gentle consistency is the key. Okay, now we're gonna mix in the coconut yogurt. Make sure all the starter gets in. We're gonna stir it up just slightly so it's all mixed in. Secure the lid, cover it with a towel. You wanna add it Give it a stir. And cover it with, cover it. Before it goes into your spot, uncover them and rearrange them where you have the yogurts in one area because you're gonna check on the yogurts and two kefirs. The kefirs are gonna stay 24 hours, the yogurts are only going to stay six to eight. We're gonna cover them separately so that we know we're not checking these two. And then you wanna put them into a cupboard, a tote, or the oven. Dry spot with the door closed. Let's check back on them when they're ready. Okay, carefully not to unwrap the kefir. We unwrap everything else here. We just take a look. It's firming up okay. It's a little more liquidy than I would like. I'm just gonna check it and then we're gonna put it in overnight. So you can see that has turned into yogurt, although a little thinner than I would like. Let's see if it will firm up in the fridge overnight. And we'll put the kefir back in overnight. Okay, so it was set all night in the fridge and we are gonna check how it's doing. So there we go. This is the yogurt that we made from the other yogurt. So again, if you want it to be more Greek, you can strain it or you can start with a, a Greek yogurt culture. It's ready for my kids and can be sweetened now with dates, fruit, vanilla extract, anything that you want to put in it. Okay, the goat's yogurt. The goat's yogurt is a little on the runny side, but it'll still be great for smoothies.
thick, very thick. So this will be stirred up. So aside from the goat's yogurt here, which probably needed a little bit longer to culture, sometimes you need to turn your oven light on. The other way that I like to make them, and I usually make them, is in my Instant Pot. So you fill the bottom with water and you can get a recipe online. And it's bathed in there at like a warm heat for the entire time. So I find it cultures a lot better. Now I had so many to do, that's why I went with um, either the cupboard or putting them in an oven method. But if I would have kept my light on, my oven light the whole time, if you do have smaller batches, three to four yogurts uh, this size, even three, you can fit them all in the Instant Pot. It's in like a little bath and you keep it on a yogurt setting and it just um, cultures in there while it's at that temperature, that lukewarm temperature the whole time. That really creates a nice thick yogurt. The other thing I like to do sometimes is drop a date in as it's culturing right at the very beginning to sink to the bottom. Sometimes culture's a little better and it's not quite as tart when it's finished, so you can play around with that. Um, so everything turned out really well here, except for the goat's yogurt. If it turns out like this, I'm kind of glad it did turn out like this so we could troubleshoot together. If your milk is too cold when you're putting in the starter pack at the beginning, that could be one of the reasons why it's not gonna set properly. Again, alternately, if it's too warm, too hot, you haven't let it cool down enough, uh, it will kill that bacteria as it goes in. So you really wanna be sure. We It might have been a little hot when we put it in, so some of the bacteria could have died. Um, the other thing is as it's culturing, you want it to be a nice warm temperature or you have to leave it longer. So those are some of the things that um, could have happened with the goat's yogurt. So again, if you get a yogurt that's a little on the thin side, you could use it for smoothies. You can still use it. It's still perfectly fine yogurt. It's just a little on the thin side. So you can't really thicken it up after you've set it and you've put it in the fridge. Okay, so now we're gonna check on our kefir. It probably has another um, six hours left before it gets to 24 hours and it could go longer, but we're gonna give it a check. So taking it out. Okay, so the goat's kefir and the coconut kefir. We're gonna try the goat's first this morning. So again, it's looking like it's culturing well. Sometimes you can leave the lids off or screw them a little looser. So you can just kind of set it, set it, and let it have some air. If we were worried that it wasn't culturing properly, we can now turn on the oven light or leave it a little longer. When we're talking about kefir, most people on a healing diet have eliminated dairy from their diet. So how do you know if and when you can use kefir to help heal yourself? Well, first, if you've eliminated dairy, which you most likely have, because if it's a, it's a culprit for a lot of things, and that's because people cannot digest the lactose in dairy. Fermentation of milk helps to alleviate that problem. But the first thing you wanna do is start with organic ghee. So again, ghee is just clarified butter. It's butter with any of the milk solids strained and free of allergens. So this is the first thing that you'll wanna try and see how you do, see if you're not reacting. The next thing you can do with the milk products and the yogurts and the kefirs that you make, you'll wanna start with one. I would start with a goat's milk kefir. You can even start with coconut milk kefir. Then you're gonna see if you tolerate ghee. If you do, you're going to try a goat's milk. If you have access to buffalo milk, that's even better. That's really non-allergenic at all. Most people have no allergies to buffalo milk. So goat's milk is better. If you're doing cow's milk, try A2 cows. And if you can't find A2 milk, then regular uh, cow's milk. Again, you want it to be organic. If you can get a place that's raw, that's amazing. What you're going to do is you're going to take the goat's milk. You're going to dab a little bit of goat's milk onto your wrist. Let it dry and 
once it's dry in about 12 hours, is it itchy? Does it turn red? Are you getting any kind of reaction to it? Do you have any rash to it? That is a really great test to see whether you can tolerate dairy. And you wanna get a good amount, rub it on, let it soak in, okay? It will dry, you know, you're gonna have to sit for a little bit with it, but it will dry relatively quickly. And then you wanna see what it does in the next 12 hours. So you could also alternately dab um, some yogurt or some kefir, rub it on your wrist, let it dry, and see what the reaction of that is. So how do you know if you want to introduce kefir or yogurt? And kefir, remember, is the one that's really got the healing benefits in it. Okay, well, if you are suffering with constipation or gas, this is going to be really great for your gut bacteria. Any kind of a stomach problem with overgrown candida or overgrown yeast or bacteria, again, this is going to be really good for you. It's going to enhance your digestion. So if you're having any kind of digestive problems at all, um, adding cultured foods to your diet, particularly kefir, is going to be beneficial. It can help with asthma symptoms. It helps with colds and flus. It can help treat acne. It can help treat yeast infections if you're a woman prone to a lot of yeast infections. It also acts like a strong natural antibiotic. So if you've got a lot of unwanted pathogens in your gut, anywhere in your body, this is going to help. It's, it's, a, it's a very strong, but very, very natural type of antibiotic. So again, it's going to um, give your body new beneficial bacteria, new beneficial yeast, things to grow your good gut bacteria. So it helps to treat diarrhea. If you're lactose intolerant, it's gonna help to treat that. It helps getting a better sleep at night. It helps with lowering blood pressure. It helps with eliminating acid reflux and uh, it supports the immune system. Now you might wonder, well, maybe, you know, since I'm having a problem with dairy, I should just do raw vegetables. I should just do the coconut kefir and I should also just do the uh, raw fermented vegetables. Let's take sauerkraut. And absolutely you can do that. Sauerkraut's amazing. It will also stop constipation and diarrhea. It will aid with weight loss. It helps to reduce uh, candida and other, uh, other you know, bacteria problems in your gut as well. But again, not eliminate, but more reduce. It helps to ease um, symptoms of bowel disorders. So again, maybe not cure, but really ease them. It helps to combat the cold and flu. It also helps to alleviate symptoms of food poisoning or flu in your stomach. It adds some beneficial bacteria to your gut as well and supports your adrenals. So all in all, it's an amazing food as well. So yes, you could stick with a coconut kefir and also do fermented vegetables, but there's something to be said for a milk kefir as well if you can work up to tolerate it. So if you are consuming coconut kefir, coconut yogurt, milk yogurt, uh, yogurt, any kind of kefir, um, cows, goats, buffalo, whatever it is, you are going to need to continue to eat a little bit every day. So when you start, you might start with just the whey, which is the water that forms on the top layer. Just drip a little bit, see how you react. Take a quarter of a teaspoon, try it. See how you react, a teaspoon. Work your way up to a tablespoon. So you're gonna be working up over a, a couple of weeks until you can have a cup, right, or a glass. So then you're gonna want to continue to eat it every day because remember, when we talked about yogurt, it feeds the beneficial bacteria in there. It's also a food for the beneficial bacteria that it's creating in there. But the other thing that you wanna do is eat some prebiotic fiber. So prebiotic fiber is destroyed a lot by heat and you don't have the same enzymes in it. So you wanna have prebiotic fiber that's raw or just very, very lightly cooked or blended, lightly blended a smoothie. Good sources of prebiotic fiber are things like apples, artichokes, asparagus, bananas, cabbage, hickory root, garlic, honey, uh, leeks, onions, sweet potatoes, squash. There's a lot of different prebiotic foods that you can eat that are really going to help your gut. Berries are, have good prebiotics in them, but hickory root, dandelion root, these things are going to be full of really, really good prebiotics. 
So again, you can make a smoothie. You can put these things in your smoothie. They're just lightly blended. Um, they're gonna feed all that good bacteria that you're getting from the kefir and the yogurts and even the cultured vegetables. They're gonna feed these things. The, the very first health book that I ever read, and you can check out, um, I've got a video on that, is a book by Jordan Rubin, who healed himself of really life-threatening Crohn's disease. And one of the main things that he did it with is kefir. So the power of kefir is demonstrated in that book. It's an amazing book. It's an amazing story, amazing healing journey, and also just speaks to the power of kefir. It can also help with things like mental health, depression, even in some cases, things like fibromyalgia or these unknown diagnoses. Now, I know a lot of people are afraid they don't, you know, probiotics can give them a histamine reaction. Probiotics can, you know, set them off or get them into a flare. Um, it can set them back. But my feeling is that over time, even if you start with a vegetable, a cultured vegetable, even if you start with a coconut milk kefir or a coconut water kefir, working your way up to a whole milk animal product kefir. And then going slowly, making sure you introduce ghee first, making sure you do the wrist test, introducing little by little, working your way up over time, adding just a little dab to your meals so that you can start to inoculate your gut. There are many healing stories of people who went from gravely ill to, to thriving, to feeling better than they ever have through the power of kefir. Now, if you can use a raw milk, that's even better. But even if it's a pasteurized milk, you can get these milks. You can make this, this is easy, you can do this. And it may take a while to build your tolerance up, but if you do, and if you give it the chance, this could be a really good healing food. And you don't know until you try and you're consistent with it. And you have to be consistent for like a three to six month period to see if you're really reaping the benefits of the power of kefir. So I know there may be hesitation, particularly if you are looking at dairy as the enemy and you definitely don't wanna have dairy, then start with the other ones. But if you can work your way up and you can tolerate it little by little, slowly by slowly, this could turn around your health. So it's definitely worth giving a try. It's definitely worth giving a few tries over your health journey. If you don't tolerate it early on, you might tolerate it mid journey or closer to the end. So it is amazing what probiotic foods can do and you won't know until you try for yourself. So this is one of these things that I recommend trying for yourself. Very easy. Now let's check on the finished products. Okay, it's been around 24 hours and we're gonna take a look. So here's the coconut kefir. It looks perfect. That looks like a nice kefir. I'm gonna give it a little taste. It's the perfect consistency. If I wanna leave it a little longer to get a little thicker, I could. Get another spoon and try the goat's kefir. And it's looking pretty good there. Now they both could go a little longer. Uh, if I firm them up in the fridge now, I think these are gonna be good. Now remember, you can leave them up to 36 hours if you want, so I could let them go another eight hours, but I'm gonna put them in the fridge now. So remember, if you wanna keep making that kefir or the yogurt, for a couple of batches, you can just take a quarter cup of, you know, at the end, a quarter cup, or take it out at the beginning, and then add your milk to it and let it sit back in the cupboard um, for the right amount of time. If it's yogurt, it's gonna be six to eight to 10 hours. And if it's kefir, it's gonna be 24, you know, up to 30 hours, 36 hours even, depending on where you've stored it. So again, remember, it's a quarter cup of the, what you've already done and, and just add in the milk So and stir it. Stir it the way you would with the starter pack. So you can do this for up to eight times before you need to restart with a new starter pack. Again, remember, if you have the grains, the kefir grains, you can make this for life. You can continue to make it. Remember also, if you have store-bought yogurt or a good quality yogurt that you've gotten from someone else, you can take that out a quarter cup and add your milk and make it that way. 
So remember, you can do that with kefir or yogurt. Okay, so let's talk about cultured vegetables then. The one that I would start with is sauerkraut, which is a cabbage. Cabbage is so easy to digest on the stomach. Cabbage is so good for you and so easy to digest. And it's a super easy one to make. You can make kimchi, you can do carrots, you could do any kind of vegetables, really. You can get very creative. But when we're talking about making cultured vegetables, you can do this by three ways, similar to um, making the kefir or the yogurt. One is you can do no culture at all. So basically it's just the food, water, and salt. You can use a starter culture, much like we just did with the yogurt and kefir, and they come in the little culture starter packets, they're powdered, similar to the yogurt and kefir. Or you can use kefir whey, which is the whey, the little watery stuff that comes on the top of your yogurt or cheese or anything that you're making. It's just that watery little bit that you can pour off. So you can use that to culture your vegetables. You can use a starter pack, or you can just use water and salt. Why do you put in the salt? Without the salt, the vegetables become um, soft and slimy. The salt will keep them nice and almost crunchy and really palatable. You're gonna ferment your vegetables on the counter or in a cupboard, and when they're fully fermented, you're gonna store them in the fridge, much like the kefir and the yogurt. You're now gonna stop the fermentation process. You're gonna store it in the fridge. And you know they're ready when they taste sour and the liquid is slightly bubbly, like a fizzy, fizzy water. And you'll know if it's, if it's already gone bad because they'll be very unappetizing. The odor will be bad. And at the end, the brine that you make is also something that you can start with. If you're afraid of introducing probiotics into your diet, you can take a little bit of the water or what we call the brine. Just take a, a small quarter of a teaspoon and drizzle on something. Have it that way. Um, and then just increase the brine and then eventually work your way up to the cultured vegetables themselves. Okay, so let's prepare some sauerkraut. So the first thing you wanna do is get a cabbage. This is a relatively small cabbage, but it's all they had uh, for organic today. So you're gonna peel off the top layer or two and set it aside because you're gonna use them at the end and I'll show you what for in a minute. Next, we're gonna chop the cabbage. I like to take off the end, cut it in half. I also like to just get the heart out. So actually, it's all on this side today. So just take a little piece of the heart out and you're ready to go. You're ready to chop it up. So I first do my long strips. Now you can shred this, you can put it in a food processor to make it easier on you if you're doing a bunch of sauerkraut. Or if you just have a cabbage or two, you can do it yourself. Turn your cutting board and go the other way. you're gonna gather it all up and pack it into a large bowl or pot. Um, you know, if you're doing more sauerkraut, you need a really large one. Doesn't matter what you use, just get it into a bowl. And then you're gonna get out your salt, either Celtic sea salt, Redmond salt, or uh, pink Himalayan salt. I like Celtic sea salt myself. And you're gonna get one large uh, tablespoon of salt, sprinkling it over the cabbage. And this is cabbage for one large mason jar worth um, of sauerkraut. So you get your hands in here and you knead it. It really does take some work if you're gonna use your own brine because you're gonna be massaging it for a while here. If you want to do a little bit of its own brine and add chop some water on the, on the top, that's fine too. Whatever you prefer, whatever you have time for. So you can see it's already starting to make a little bit of its own juices. And it just helps to massage it, really. So if I kept going, this would make its own brine. But because I don't want to keep going right now, I'm just going to pack it into the jar. So you're just going to put it in and pack it down as you go. Now 
Now remember, the longer you massage it, you can make your own brine. So then, at the end, it's sitting in its own juices rather than the water. So remember to really pack it down tight. And this is gonna be just perfect, this size cabbage. Now this is basic sauerkraut. This is gonna be basic sauerkraut. You could also add a little bit of caraway seeds. You could also add some dill flavoring. You could add any spices that you wanted to here. Caraway or dill makes a really nice sauerkraut, but I like it plain. So again, you're gonna pack it down nice and tight. Pack it down to a great level. Okay, now you're gonna take the old cabbage leaves and just kind of fold them up like this. Fold them up, roll them up like this. And you are going to use this, fold it up, after we add the water to be the weight on top of the cabbage. So now we're gonna get our filtered water. I'm gonna be filling this with my Berkey water filter just until it's submerged. You just want them submerged, not higher. Remember, if you massage this enough, it will be sitting in its own brine. Okay, once it's in its own water there, you've packed it down, it's just submerged. You're gonna add your leaves here as the weight. This is just gonna weigh it down to keep it under the juice. Okay, those are gonna come out at the end. Okay, once you've secured it with a towel and a paper band, actually double up the paper towel, put an elastic band over it. You're gonna store it in a cool, dry place for two weeks. Make sure you use a wide mouth jar because it's easier to get the cabbage in and out. In the first 24 hours, you're just gonna check it and make sure it's submerged. Just make sure that that weight is pushed down and everything stays um, in its juices. After three days, you can start to test it. Give it a little taste, see what it's like. You can keep it up to 10 days fermenting. Um, you want it to taste like real sauerkraut. You want it to be sour. And you also wanna make sure that you see the water fermented. It should be bubbly, like fermented water. Sometimes the sauerkraut takes even longer than 10 days. It may take 14 to even up to 30 days. If it goes longer than 30 days, throw it out and start over. Something You've done something wrong. If you see white foam or white scum coming on the top as it's fermenting, it can just be um, taken off with a spoon or a fork and you can continue fermenting. But if you see any mold, you may wanna consider throwing it out. If it's just the white scum and the white stuff at the top, just take it off and keep fermenting. The cabbage is fine, everything underneath. You don't wanna eat that part, but you can take it off. When the sauerkraut is done fermenting, you're gonna take this off, you're gonna take the weight out, and you're gonna tighten it with a lid and store it in the fridge. And then your sauerkraut is ready to eat. So let's just put it in the cupboard to start the fermentation process. One other thing you wanna do before you put it away is put the date that you made this on. Put a piece of tape, put it on. Uh, always put your ferment date on there so you know how long it's been fermenting for because after a number of days, you're gonna forget. Now remember, you can ferment a lot of vegetables this way. You can just use salt, you can cover them, submerge them in water or their own brine, and you can add caraway seeds or other flavor if you like your sauerkraut flavored. So remember, when you eat cultured vegetables, particularly something like sauerkraut, you get enhanced nutrient availability in the food because it's already partially broken down and the nutrients and the nutrient availability is easier for your body to assimilate. You are getting an increase in lactic acid. Things like pathogens and bad bacteria don't, do not like lactic acid. So this is a really good thing to kill off those pathogens. You're gonna have a spike in vitamin C, a spike in vitamin K2. It's really good for your immune system and immune support. It helps with your bowel movements, it helps with your digestion, and it increases your enzymes in your stomach. So it's great for anything like colitis, inflammation of the gut, Crohn's, irritable bowel syndrome. It's gonna reduce overall inflammation. It's gonna really improve your immunity. 
It prevents diarrhea, constipation, helps with food allergies. It helps with H. pylori infections. It's good for everything. It's good for your gut. It's good for your brain. It's good for your liver. It can be good for skin conditions like acne or eczema, uh, mental health conditions, any kind of depression, anxiety, brain disorders. It's even been linked to improve and help with cancer, things like food allergies, food sensitivities it helps with. It can help with uh, obesity, overweight, like being uh, obese or uh, weight gain. And it can even help some autoimmune conditions. It helps with detoxification. And ultimately it helps increase the number of good bacteria into your gut. And it's easy, so go ahead and make your own sauerkraut. You can buy your sauerkraut, but you can make your sauerkraut. It's very easy and you can start slow. You can start with the brine. You can work your way up um, to a little bit more brine, a little bit more brine, and then ultimately a little bit of sauerkraut, a little bit more. You can start slowly and work your way up, but it's definitely a food that you want to put into your diet. We're gonna check on our sauerkraut from two days ago. We can take this off and give it a little test in there and see what it's doing. You don't wanna use your fingers and you don't certainly don't wanna use anything metal. So you can just take a small taste. It is certainly not fermented yet. but it's on its way. If you felt like when you tested it, it needs more salt, you can add a little bit of salt to the top. You normally wanna wait till the seven day mark to test your sauerkraut, but I just wanted to see how it was going. Put it back in your cupboard. You can even wrap it with a warm towel. You want it to be somewhere where it's generally dark and warm. Okay, we're gonna give it a check on day seven. And now we're gonna check it. So day seven has yielded perfect sauerkraut. Here is the finished sauerkraut, which looks amazing, still has crunch, totally sour, and going to be amazing. And so now you're going to secure it with a lid and pop it in your fridge. So the key is to be checking it every day from day three to day seven removing the weight if you notice that it's getting a little moldy, putting new cabbage leaves or something else heavy, uh, some other vegetable on top to hold it down. Sometimes carrots work. You wanna be sampling it every two to three days and it's probably gonna be somewhere in between four, five, six, seven, eight days. So you really wanna be checking it. All right, well, thank you for watching. I hope you can see how easy this was. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it around, and in the meantime, you can check out some of my other videos, and I'll see you in the next one.